Hello, everyone. My name is Prince Samar, and I'm a director of product management here at Aruba. I am today joined with, by Kevin Marshall, who is a distinguished technologist and solution architect at Aruba. And uh, we'll be talking about how Aruba enables the hybrid workplace. So as uh, David talked about, the Aruba Edge Services platform enables the hybrid workplace. It enables a unified architecture all the way from large campuses to distributed branches, as well as to remote, remote workers who may be working from their home. Uh, the solution is all unified and Aruba Central provides a single pane of glass for uh, the IT administrator to, to deploy, to manage, uh, and to troubleshoot the, the overall experience for all of the users, no, no matter where they are. So the, as David talked about earlier, uh, for remote access solution, uh, it's really easy to deploy. Uh, we have the Aruba access points, what we call the remote access points that can be shipped to the individual workers home. And all they have to do is to plug it in into their uh, ISP's uh, internet connection. The AP uh, comes up, uh, it talks to Aruba Central and gets provisioned automatically and starts uh, broadcasting the, the work as society that, that may have been provisioned already in Aruba Central. The access point also includes the additional wired ports uh, that can be used to plug in some wired devices like a wipe port phone or a printer and, and other such devices and uh, any other devices that the employee has can connect uh, wirelessly to the access point getting the same set of services and the same in-office experience that they're that they may have been used to uh, at their office uh, from an IT administrator's perspective, the whole solution is very easy to uh, deploy, provision, and manage. Aruba Central provides that single pane of glass uh, they can use to that they can use to uh, monitor how the network is doing, and it can also be used to uh, troubleshoot if there are any issues uh, from any of the, any one of the remote workers' uh, locations. So. Let's look at a day in the life of the IT administrator. We'll look at how the network is doing, how, how the IT administrator can look at uh, the, the overall deployment uh, across the different locations and how they may be able to troubleshoot. So uh, this is where Kevin, uh, can you show us how we can look at uh, uh, the user experience that the different users would uh, maybe undergoing uh, uh, wherever they are working from? Yes. Certainly can. Good morning, everyone. So I think uh, one of the common questions we get asked a lot is, uh, you know, how do I how do I know if uh, my users experience users are connecting, my applications are working right, and how how everything is overall functioning right in uh, in a hybrid uh, working environment, not just in a campus, but uh, for when you know, and this is especially true when working. When dealing with lots of large, uh, large distributed deployments with users connecting in different ways, and this can be, you know, this can be challenging. But uh, you know, I think with uh, some of the capabilities we offer in the Ruby Central, and uh, some of the unique tools, I think we tried to make uh, try to make this a little easier. So let's uh, take a look at a live system real quick. Um, so this particular uh, central. Uh, uh, account supports uh, you know users and devices uh, for you know across our corporate headquarters. Uh, we've got a few branch offices uh, as well as some work from home employees. These are a combination of teleworkers that are connected to remote APs as well as teleworkers that are using our via VPN clients. Uh, the network health uh, summary view that's uh, currently being displayed kind of gives you a temperature thermometer view of the overall health of the network and gives you a good visual uh, indication as to what the overall health is of particular sites. And it gives you a good way of identifying uh, the hotspots. Now, Ruba Central also has uh, some other mechanisms, which uh, we also have. So we have things like webhooks, alerts, and alarms, and events, uh, which can be consumed in a number of different ways. But you know, if you're, if this is a generally a good view of, of visually being able to identify hotspots within the network. We also have a tabulous available in that tabular uh, form as well, if needed, if that's how you prefer to consume, uh, consume that information. Now, North America kind of looks like a nuclear bomb went off and it's all red. 
And and really the these the way that this you know this is presented is the further you are you know these circles kind of present represent the number of sites that are currently active on the system. And as I zoom in, basically more context or more information is exposed. So let's take a look at uh, our uh, California location real quick here. In our California location, we actually have uh, quite a few sites uh, just around the office. We have a few teleworker sites, and we also have our old corporate office and our new corporate office. And just by looking at this particular location or this particular geographic region, I can see that, you know, just by hovering over the pointers, I can say, okay, I've got a, this particular case, I've got a teleworker site. It's actually one of my peers. The card provides me a good summary of, um, you know, how many devices connected, how many clients, if there are any AI insights that have been generated. And my colleague, uh, Robin Jellum is going to talk to you about some of the uh, exciting enhancements uh, the, and some of the cool things we're doing there uh, in, in the next uh, shortly. And, uh, you know, the health, uh, the green just in, you know, gives you a visual indicator that, hey, based on uh, the current state, uh, everything looks good. If I uh, look at our, um, our, our old uh, corporate office, however, things, you know, are, we definitely have some challenges that are going on in this particular location. I can see that uh, you know instantly we looks like we've got some APs that may be experiencing some challenges in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. No surprises there. And I also have some AI insights that have been generated for this particular site. And it's very easy from here for me to get from a top level view, get down to a particular site, and then click within the site to, to you know to do that next level of investigation. In this case here, I'm just going to click on the particular insight. And I can see that uh, it looks like that this particular critical insight is, uh, you know, due to clients that are failing uh, authentication and most likely due to uh, invalid uh, valid credentials. Now, the, the thing I really like about how we present insights and for being able to proactively identify issues is I'm not just telling you or the system's not just telling you what it's seeing, it's also telling you why it thinks it's seeing and also gives you the necessary associated information. So I can very quickly, for example, I can see which radius servers are involved. I can see which access points the impacted users were attaching to. But more importantly, I can also see which users are impacted. And I can actually click further on any of these uh, yeah, pointers within these tiles to get the next level of information if I need it. So for example, if I wanted to go and see which particular client this is, I could click uh, click uh, you know, on this MAC address, or I could click on the AP name to get to those uh, further detailed views. Uh, the other thing I just want to point out too is that uh, you know the we also this is you know the the number of failures and how often this has occurred is also is also presented here and that's going to be based on a uh, window of time that is uh, selected up here so I can actually very quickly and easily expand or contract uh, the you know, the time frame for for looking at information uh, if if needed. A quick question: Is this taking the place of anything, the like airwave that you've had in the past, or is it new or augmented? What's what's the difference? So this is all supported today. So this is part of our AI insights, AI operations, and our overall monitoring system that we have in Aruba Central. So this would be this this is just giving you an example of how we provide. Uh, I guess this. Uh, real real time uh, or uh, I guess proactive monitoring capabilities in central for for all of the remote devices whether it be a you know a teleworker or via client you know via VPN user so this would be you know this this would be available to any customer today that's deploying any of our devices that are using Aruba central um, how granular is the ability to say, you know, I want email alerts on this red thing, but not that red thing, you know, email alerts or, you know, what, whatever, just something, you know, that reaches out of the system and lets somebody know that there's an issue. Uh, the events and alerts uh, uh, are, are configurable based on your needs. I'd have to honestly just full transparency, have to, to look at that leap. Um, I don't know that answer off the top of my head, but we can certainly get back to you on that. Okay, so what I'm wondering kind of, is there like a, you know, help desk kind of tier and then, you know, an engineer kind of tier and stuff that, 
you know, this person would care about that this other person wouldn't care about, et cetera. So. Yes, yeah, so I mean, the, the alerts are configurable. So for example, if you have different, uh, let's say you have different distribution lists, so you have a health desk distribution list, for example, yes, you can configure certain alerts to only trigger and actually be sent to that distribution list versus let's say if you've got some uh, critical infrastructure alerts. So uh, let's say you care about a call switch or an aggregation layer switch, or uh, let's just say a, a VPN concentrate ahead end then that those alerts can be sent to a different team because we all know that IT teams are not all one big happy family right they are siloed and independent right there are specific roles and functions within those teams uh, so on these alerts is there any way that we can cross context them like say if every time I'm seeing AP reboots I want to see the last five packets that it got before it went down or you know some let's just say some arbitrary metric I want to know the RSSI uh, before clients started failing. Uh, is there a way to configure that too? Or are we locked into single metric reporting within events? Well, I think I think some of that is um, solved by AI insights, which I may be robbing can expand upon when he's talking about it, right? Because I think some of that is you know, the correlation pieces are, you know, and, and how we solve that is a little bit of a different slight discussion than proactive monitoring. But I think, uh, I think, if I understand the gist of your question is to say, hey, if I have an AP that's actually failing for some reason, right, it goes offline, what, you know, other than, you know, telling me that it's lost power, right, is there any other contextual information that we know about that may be contributed to that event, right? That I think is where AI insights and where the AI operations piece comes into play, because that's where, you know, the machine learning and the algorithms really, you know, try to pull some of that information together. Does that, does that help? It does. Thank you. So on the AI apps and data sheet, it says that um, role-based access control requires uh, the ClearPass policy manager. Can you elaborate on how uh, AI apps, uh, what, what is required um, from a ClearPass AI apps integration in order to make this all work? Or it, can one product stand on its own without the rest of them and not lose functionality? Are you referring to Sam as to the actual logging into the central instance itself, or from the in? I yeah, so 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 dovetailing on the Lee's question, right? Yeah. Which is, hey, I've got um, I have multiple people in the IT organization yep. that require different roles, and the data sheet pretty clearly says um, uh, role-based access control for AI ops is driven by ClearPass policy manager. So I'm just sort of wondering what, you know, how much of that feature is actually built into AI ops versus requires some external piece. Well, I think the overall role-based access into central as a whole, we're kind of deviating a little bit, I think from, uh, the session, but, uh, is, you know, is configurable, right? It's not necessarily reliant on ClearPass. ClearPass can certainly be a vehicle for, time, you know, for providing that context. But, uh, but you know, the, the user directory and the rights and permissions can be, you know, can be a, any external uh, system, right? So, I mean, we support. It could be local to central. It could be external, such as, uh, you know, any OAuth or whatever, you know, OAuth tool based uh, system and so forth. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that it's not totally, you know, ClearPass is not required for me to be able to log into Central and to be able to determine what my role is within Central. So Sam did trigger a question for me. Um, as I look at this, you know, I, I only occasionally um, look in on Aruba stuff. So my continuity of uh, understanding what you're doing, you know, in your timelines is a little bit limited. So Aruba Central manages pretty much all Aruba products, only network products. And, you know, I won't find anything to do with ClearPass in here. I guess what I'm asking is, you know, what is the footprint of uh, manager ma managing and monitoring and probably an obvious question that goes with it it's only going to be Aruba bits and pieces it doesn't you know there's nothing if I have a hybrid mixed environment the non-Aruba pieces are not going to be seen in here yes yeah, so I think that's that's a good question and I, I think it sounds like we need to have a follow-up uh, session Prince and and team on maybe a on Aruba Central as a as a platform for you guys uh, in a maybe a hopefully a future session. But yes, Aruba Central manages all our current platforms, whether it be APs, whether it be gateways, whether it be switches, and that includes our 
older switches such as AOSS or our newer switches such as uh, CX. So all those platforms are supported. There is some also some integration with um, uh, Aruba uh, ClearPass as well, if if needed, right? So some of that in integration is there. As for third parties, Aruba Central does not currently monitor, configure, or manage third party infrastructure devices, and that's in line with other platforms on the uh, within the industry as well. Uh, I can't talk about roadmap or future, but you know, just you know, stay tuned on some of those, uh, you know, uh, some of those things for the future as to some of those capabilities that we may we may be looking at. But that's all, you know, that's nothing that's you know we're we're currently targeting, but maybe something we can look at in the future. So I want to go back to my question earlier and dig deeper into it. Um, is Airwave dead? I mean, everything, all of this um, AI and everything else, we're talking about central, we haven't talked about airwave at all. Is is it dead now and everything going forward is central or central on-prem or is any of this being pulled into airwave? So airwave is something that we continue to uh, develop and support. Uh, we have a large set of customers who, co who continue to use airwave and will continue to support and develop it uh, to include the, the newer platforms and features and software that we're building. Uh, at the same time, the future direction that we're emphasizing more is Aruba Central. And it's on-prem version, Aruba Central on-prem. So these would be two versions uh, which would have uh, a lot of parity in terms of uh, the features and functionality. But uh, in the longer term, the, this is where we expect to, to be going. Uh, and Central on-prem would be the, the future platform. Okay, so you, you mentioned continuing to develop on Airwave. Um, Diving deeper into that, does that mean new feature sets, the, the AI ML stuff, or is it it can continue to do what it's done, which is be a monitoring and management tool? Yes, so that's a great question. And that's where I uh, the point uh, about uh, Central on-prem and Central being the, the future platforms, because Central is able to ingest data from a large set of customers. We are able to uh, uh, run all of those uh, uh, data points through AI ML algorithms, train our models, and be able to provide the insights uh, across uh, the different deployments. So that's where the, the power of the cloud comes in. Uh, so that's why uh, Airwave as an on-prem platform may not be able to support the, the these modern AI insights and AI ML algorithms. I have a quick question related to ClearPass. Do you think you guys will integrate ClearPass into Central one day? Is that feasible, doable? So uh, yeah, that's something that uh, that's part of the roadmap. Uh, we would be the clear pass would continue to exist as a separate platform, but uh, yeah, in the future, you're going to see additional features and functionality in Central as well. Great. I've got a quick question with um, the, how often is data um, updates sent from devices into Central? And I guess what I'm trying to understand is what maybe processing delay might they be in the AI ops algorithms as well. So how real time is the data you're seeing in central? The data in central, uh, there are different kinds of data and they, they get updated into central at different rates. Uh, so for example, uh, the devices like uh, access points and gateways, they send out periodic updates every minute or for certain data every five minutes. There are other cap capabilities in central as well. So, and that's, that's something we'll look at uh, in a little bit uh, where essentially you could say go live on a particular client or a particular device, and then you can see real time streaming data uh, to if you're trying to uh, debug or troubleshoot or find the performance of, of a specific uh, device or client. Okay, so if, um... If some of the data is coming in every five minutes, let's say that is um, the example I think that was shown was authentication failures. Would I only see authentication failures five minutes after they occurred? So if a radiant server went down, uh, I, 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 I would expect clients to have complained to me before five minutes. Yeah. That's what no. I, that's what I understand. 
So I think, Peter, it's it's dependent on the, the type of telemetry information that's there. Like, like as Prince mentioned, right? Some of the information is going to come more frequently than others, right? Um, because if not the you know the amount of information that you're going to be streaming, right? You're just you know your devices are just going to be sending you know gigabits of data constantly, right? To the to the uh, to the cloud. So we have to be a little bit bit conservative. So things like um, um, authentications, things like that, right, are going to come more frequently than, uh, you know, things like, you know, certain RF stats, for example, right, things that maybe don't change as frequently. Uh, other things, uh, as Prince mentioned, right, are, are can be on demand in real time, right? So, for example, if I'm troubleshooting a, an attachment issue, I can look at our live uh, view and that information is streamed in real time. Okay. Yeah, and events get updated uh, right away. Uh, the, these, uh, the periodic ones are more for the stats that get accumulated over a period of time and then get updated. Kevin, uh, you mentioned uh, VR clients. Uh, yep. Can you look at how VR clients uh, can be seen in Central? Yeah, um, so yeah, uh, good question. Um, so yeah, actually, if, uh, if we look at our unified clients view, so. VPN clients are not traditionally assigned to, to sites, right? So yeah, we don't have like uh, the ability to pinpoint them on a pretty map like we would for uh, other clients, but we can actually uh, we can actually see them and their health in the unified uh, client view. So in this particular case here, I can actually see all the clients that are currently connected or clients that are in a connected state, whether it be wired, wireless, or remote. And uh, you know, I can very easily narrow down to the look at particular clients uh, that I'm interested in. So right now, I can see that on the system, I have about 22 clients are connected. 30 of those are wireless, five are wired, and uh, some of these are via. So it looks like actually right now, I've got what about four uh, via clients that are that are currently connected. Um, this view is also kind of yeah, useful as well because it also gives me a status field. And this is these columns, by the way, are fully customizable. So you can add or remove uh, the columns as you wish. And um, in, in this particular case, I've got some clients that are currently in a failed state. And likewise, you know, by hovering over them, you can, you know, we give you kind of like a summary reason as well as to why they failed. In this particular case, these are the same. Uh, clients that forgot to change their password in our corporate office uh, that are being rejected by the authentication service. So the idea here is that this client view for up to, you know, for the current connected, and actually you can go back in time potentially up to three months if you not, if you wish, you know, gives you the full view as to all the devices that are on your system, their health and what their connection state is. So Kevin, there was a question earlier about IoT devices. So how do I know what kind of client devices are connected to my network? Yeah, so this is a kind of cool feature. So I think some of the uh, question came up as well, right? About visibility, right? How often do we send information? So the client, uh, so we've had the, we added the ability to do uh, what profiling, I think in the, in uh, a few months ago. And, uh, and that this is part of our, I think CPDDI integration in with Aruba Central where, you know, our APs and gateways are able to send certain information about the client devices as they attach to Central where, you know, the engine does the classification and this, you know, basically uh, gives you, gives the ability to, you know, shows what, or do a root call determination as to what the device is. So uh, just by basically looking at the clients and going to the client profile, you know, I can see for a wired, wireless and via VPN clients, all the devices that are currently being profiled in the system for the past three hours. And I also have the ability as well to actually go back for up to, to three months. Uh, it's actually quite a nice little feature. So this would give you the ability, for example, to identify, uh, you know, if somebody, let's say, connected an Amazon Alexa, for example, to a remote teleworker AP, uh, this would give you the ability to determine that or Roku's and other, other devices. So basically anything that connects to a remote AP to a wireless would, would be presented here. Quick question. Do you have a, the ability to actually change the device of the profile? So if you connect it like a random, you know, um, I'm thinking about wireless cameras that we would have at home. Would mm -hmm. you have the ability to kind of say, this is a wireless camera, this is the brand, and then fit that into the system? Okay. Yeah, so you, so good question. So yes, you can actually uh, do additional tags if needed as well. Um, so you, you can, for example, add some additional user tags if you wanted to. So for up to your example, maybe you want to tag uh, employee assets would be maybe 
So that would be another way that you could filter and present that view. Does that, that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, excellent. So Kevin, the remote access points have some wired ports as well. Can we look at uh, how devices connected to those wired ports are working? Uh, Yes, uh, actually, I have a, a new teleworker site that's actually just been deployed, uh, surprisingly. Um, so I can actually, uh, using our um, natural language search, I can search for the site and I can see, uh, in this case here, it's a TW just designate teleworker. And I can see that I've got a site and an access point that matches that string. This just happens to be the access point that's assigned to that teleworker and it matches the site name. I can see actually just by quickly hovering up here, it looks like the AP is up. If I hover over the site, I can see some additional information. So I can see, for example, uh, you know, how many AP switches, gateways are assigned to the site. In this case here, it's just a teleworker, so it's an AP only. I can see how many clients are currently active, as well as any insights uh, that have been triggered. And there are some additional actions that I can perform. So for example, uh, getting back to one of Peter's questions, right? The real-time troubleshooting, right? How do I get that real-time information? In the case of an AP, for example, I would be able to go directly to the live actions to do, you know, to troubleshoot a remote client that's having a, issues attaching. So in this case here, let's take a look at the clients that are connected to this uh, remote AP. And, you know, instantly I have, uh, I can see I've got a wireless client that's attached and I also have a wired client that's attached. And I can actually, just by clicking on that client, I can see that it's connected to the third ethernet port on this, uh, on the remote AP. That happens to be a PoE port as well, by the way. I can see, you know, client information and network information. And also, uh, you know, see that this looks like this device is actually generating some, some type of traffic. Uh, so, you know, we have some basic visibility just here without any of the additional, uh, you know, without any of the additional secret source that, uh, that Arupa provides. Now, if I want to see exactly what traffic that wired client is uh, generating, I can actually do that by looking at the sessions view. And in this case here, it is a voice over IP phone. Uh, the system, by the way, has already classified and, and profiled this as a Cisco 9971 Cisco VOIP phone. And I can see in real time, the current uh, UDP sessions that are actually being generated by this phone. In this particular case, it looks like the user is currently using it. And this can be refreshed in real time as well. So this is pulled directly from the AP via our, our management control channel. And I can see, you know, I can expand this out. I can see source destination. I can look at details for, for this traffic, how the, uh, what the, the particular flow has been uh, classified as. But also too, um, I can also look at this from the gateways perspective. Now this particular phone is actually connected to a distributed L3 VLAN, which means that it's basically each branch has got a routed subnet, small routed subnet that's been allocated. And all this traffic is actually being forwarded for, through the head end. So I can very quickly transition to the VPNC here and actually see additional information, see its perspective of the client sessions as well, which also includes uh, you know, what DSCP values are being used to mark that particular traffic, which is very useful when troubleshooting uh, you know, potential QoS issues uh, if, you know, from remote sites. Kevin, what's the, uh, what's the seed information that it's processing to display this to us? So the seed, of, you mean how is how are we getting this information, Landon? Yes, sir. Like uh, through D, uh, DPI or that's a very good question, and and, and I kind of glossed over that. But yes, you're you're hundred percent tech. So all our APs and our gateways basically have staple packet inspection firewalls with DPI capability built in. So or any session that's going through these devices are going to be classified, and and you know. Uh, detected appropriately. Following on that, any work on uh, uh, guessing on encrypted sessions now that everything, there's so much oh, encrypted on the internet? Oh, Luke, you have to ask that question. That I think that's a, a bigger, bigger challenge that as an industry, right, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to solve. Um, okay. I don't have a good answer. Fair for answer. You. No, no, I, I will take that answer happily. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, one one thought for my end, I think it would be nice to have like a topology view where you could see maybe end to end 
traffic and if there's a problem if you're troubleshooting you could see okay maybe that's a, at the branch route of you and then you can drill down and get back to where you were yeah fair, yeah fair feedback yeah and that brings up a good question uh, essentially uh, this is all great to see the performance of how the network and the users are doing but if i have a user calling in uh, from their home saying that that their wi-fi is not working what do i do how do i troubleshoot Typical workflow from a help desk, right, is I'm going to locate the user. I'm going to look at their username, MAC address, IP, whatever, you know, information that I have. Uh, so in this particular case here, Ferb is, uh, is uh, you know, Ferb is complaining they can't get to a website, right? Now, this is a remote teleworker. Now, if I was debugging this in, a, in my campus environment, I would look at the firewall. I'd look at different points in the network and have, a different set of tools that I would use to troubleshoot this user. In this particular case, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, you need, we, or, you know, we have some unique capabilities that are unique to Aruba that can assist with that. In this case here, I can, for example, you know, uh, do the live events. If FERP was, for example, uh, you know, unable to connect to the network, the live events would uh, give me full visibility into that attachment process and where it's failing. In this case here, the user's actually connected and uh, let's go and figure out what's going on, right? So if Ferb can't connect to salesforce.com, right? So I, I know he's connected to this SSID, this AP, the traffic is going through this particular gateway. I can look at the applications and just do a quick look here and let's uh, narrow this view down to three hours. It looks like Ferb is actually able to get out to the internet and actually able to connect to some external websites. Uh, so, you know, it looks like for, from a basic connectivity perspective, you know, Ferb has some connect, you know, at least some, you know, basic access to the internet. So, you know, I know that, you know, at least from a connectivity, he's okay. Now, if I look at the AP itself, can the AP reach salesforce.com? Is there something between the remote teleworker AP through the VPN tunnel and the gateway through the data center that's preventing Ferb from accessing you know, salesforce.com. So I can actually use uh, the, you know, the network check in this particular case, you know, just to run a quick test from the AP through the tunnel, through the data center and all the firewalls and everything that uh, we have in our data center, just to verify if the AP can reach it, right? That's a good way of detecting, is there a path issue, right? Between the teleworker AP and the client. And sure enough, looks like, uh, you know, the AP can reach it. Now, again, you know, the, having the ability to actually look at the sessions in real time is a, is a very useful tool for, for at least the debugging this particular issue. So if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm a help desk person, I can ask FERB in this particular case to, you know, reattach, try to reaccess salesforce.com. I can refresh, uh, refresh the session table here and look at uh, and just search for the application and I get an instant feedback that hey looks like you know something in the AP is actually denying this flow most likely it's a policy role that's actually assigned to the role that's assigned to the user and again by expanding out I can see exactly which role th this rule is assigned to so in this particular case you know it's very easy to debug you know this is very simplified example but as you can see the tools and having necessary tools to have that real-time visibility right into those remote teleworker devices in real time give you some extra visibility that's you know allows you to you know troubleshoot and resolve these you know more challenging issues so Kevin, did any of that did any of what you just did require an agent on the end device no none of it lee all this is uh, just a basic standard um you know <clears throat> stock operating system stock pcs nothing was required on the end user device with the exception of the Windows device, which obviously uses a supplicant, Microsoft supplicant, right, to authenticate to the network. That's the only thing that's really special there. And that's is, um, built in. Is there any way to set up, um, say, specific sites that you wanted to test against all the time? You could get alerts if a specific thing oh. wasn't available across the whole network or for a particular group of oh, people? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that falls into a different platform, uh, Dan. That would be our US. UXI sensors. Um, think of those as like distributed uh, devices that you could strategically place throughout um, key sites, and then they can perform, um, you know, proactive synthetic tests. 
for example, attach to websites, test uh, AAA uh, response times or DNS serve, name server response times and things like that. Kevin, I have a question on um, how HP is handling the privacy of uh, traffic that's going over the network. We don't really want our remote users having one access point for work and one access point for their personal life, because then you're going to have to deal with the coexistence issues. Um, but we've seen, you know, a lot of work going on with um, devices that sandbox personal devices. Is HP doing anything at the AP level to say, okay, this can be used for personal use as well as private, and then protecting the private use and and where do you draw the line and how do you do that? Yeah. yeah, so we can, we, you know, our remote teleworker AP solution has been able to support that scenario for some time. So for it's very, actually very easy for us in this particular case, just to provision, uh, let's say an MPSKW LAM would be a perfect example of that. Tie that in with a ClearPass service for device registration and, uh, you know, or self registration portal, if that's uh, what you want to, you know, deem, and then sandbox that out at the AP. So the end users could actually have a, uh, you know, a personal or, or a, uh, you know, a, a uh, home guest, whatever you want to call it, WLAN, you know, they can register their own devices, connect, and there's a number of ways we can do that. So we do offer that today, and that would be completely segmented, you know, from the employee traffic. Okay, so you're not going to be looking at, you know, because you're doing it at the device level. If someone's using a device for multiple purposes, then it's not segmented. It's just done at the device level, right? Are you talking about like having a BYOD device? Maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. My apologies. I well, maybe I was just misunderstanding how you were doing it. Like if I have a personal device or personal devices, you can keep it off the network. I get that. But yeah. what if what if I have a, a device that I'm using for multiple purposes mm -hmm. and therefore are you segmenting it? Like is there a different SSID that you then don't manage oh, or yeah. something like that, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, my my answer may be my answer. Yeah. So for my answer, I, what I was saying is is for the, the remote AP for itself, for example, Avery, we can have like an employee SSID and then we can have like a an, an employee guest or employee personal SSID that's actually provisioned on that and keep the traffic separate, if that makes any sense. And then that you way. don't look at that traffic. You you eliminate it from your central system, um, in other words. Yeah, that's a, yeah, <laughs> that's that's something I don't think we, we right, uh, right. can exclude today. Um, that's not something I'm aware that we can exclude today. Yeah. What we could do is uh, split out certain traffic. Uh, for example, internet bound traffic could go directly to the internet and not go into the tunnel to the, to the data center. Yes. You have visibility, the application, the IP sites, the, the management stuff, you'll still have visibility to. So your empl employees or the work, remote workers really need to understand that. And that can be quite technically challenging for um, non-technical people to understand that, right? I mean, it's a challenge for the industry is what I'm saying. Yeah, I think most approaches today is an all or nothing approach, right? It's you know, you either you either provide visibility or not be not at the next level of granularity, which I think is uh, where your question is. 